Hey, what's up, Bob Mortgage Nation? This is the 17th episode of the Ask Bob Mortgage Show. You have questions, I have answers. Great, great question. What right. I want to be able to do is give you world life experiences that I've been going through. So what do we talk about on the show? Well, it's a platform and a forum for you guys to be able to have your questions answered. So you're out there on social media, right? Just ask the question, hashtag Ask Bob Mortgage, and my team's gonna go through them on a weekly basis, put them together, and then somebody's gonna be sitting in the hot seat. Today it's Deborah. They're gonna be asking me the questions and hopefully I'll be able to deliver some answers for you. So Deborah, you're up. Hot seat it is. Whoa. So let's go, we got some questions, right? You have some questions. All right, first, let's go. The first question is from your biggest fan from YouTube commented on your 16th episode of the Ask Bob Mortgage Show. Love this. Do you think 2018 was a good year for the market mortgage industry? And what do you expect for 2019? Okay, right out of the gate. Um, I don't know who my biggest fan is. My, my kids may be, I don't know if they're, they're, I don't think they're the ones asking that. But uh, wow, okay, that's a big one. So I think 2018, look, I've been doing this for 22 years. I think every year has been a great year, even when we had the down cycles with the housing crisis and there's a lot of uh, struggles and challenges there. It was still a great year for those that understood how to navigate their way through that part of the industry, investors acquiring properties. There was still business to be had. Um, but we did see some things happen that were unique to 2018. I mean, we had, we had a, a down stock market. The stock market did pull back a little bit. Inflation was pretty tame. But we also saw uh, interest rates increase, right? They, they, they increased. I mean, you know, we probably increased three-eighths to a half a percent just in, in 2000, uh, 2018. But you know what's funny? I talk to renters all the time, and I'm like, do you really care that it increased three-eighths to a half a percent? Because you know why? You don't want to really care about that? You're paying 100% rent. That's, that's your interest rate on rent. It's 100%. So yeah, we did see a little bit of an increase in 2018, but it's so much better than, than uh, the interest rate that you pay when you're renting. So if we look at 2019, uh, some of the same things I think we'll, we'll see. Uh, I think inflation is probably gonna rise just a little bit because uh, oil prices are, um, are on, probably on the rise and then we have just more pressures around uh, wage growth. Uh, stock market, you know, I, Man, I think the stock market's gonna gonna increase this year as compared to, to last year. And while the while the stock market would be increasing uh, year over year from last year to this year, that should also cause more pressure on interest rates because as money goes into the stock market, um, it comes out of the bond market, which is a driver of interest rates. So if money's going out, then the interest rates are gonna go up. Okay, in in uh, in that regard. But with money going into the stock market should make us as consumers more confident in our jobs, uh, more confident in employment, uh, which would should mean that housing would pick up from that because that's a driving force. If we're more confident, then we maybe will will spend more more money on the housing cycles. We'll have more dispendable um, uh, money. So overall. Look, 2018 was a unique year. It's a different year. We had to find our way a little bit. Interest rates were increasing. We saw mortgage people that were really focused on refinances, trying to get into purchases, and it just didn't work out, right? A lot of those companies exited. Uh, they, if they were built on refinances, they had to get out of the business or they had to find another company to merge with because they weren't purchase-driven uh, originators or purchase-driven companies. So it really hasn't impacted the team bought mortgage because we've always been driven on the, on the purchase side of the business. So we've been thriving year over year. So that's a big one right out of the gate. So my biggest fan or your biggest fan, what is it? Your biggest fan. Your biggest fan, hopefully is my biggest it's fan. <laughs> hopefully that got your question answered. All right, take care, man. Thanks. Okay, what else we got? The next one is from Kate on Facebook. She asks, from the perspective of a first time home buyer, what is the importance of filing a residential homestead exemption? How soon should you file after purchasing? Okay, Kate, Facebook, love you. All right, great question. Um, yeah, it's super important, right? I mean, you're, you're as, a, as, a, as a new homeowner, 
what you're able to do is remove a portion of your, your taxes that you're going to be paying. So for instance, let's say you bought a house, just using this math, you bought a house at $100,000 um, and it's appraised at $100,000. If you don't file for that homestead exemption, then you're gonna be paying taxes on $100,000, right? Mm -hmm. So when you file for your homestead exemption, which by the way, you can file uh, every uh, January 1st, that's when you're able to make that filing for your homestead exemption. And it typically has to be in by April. Uh, now th there's extensions and all that kind of stuff, but usually you would go from January to April is when you really need to file that homestead exemption. But when you file it, if you're, if you're filing it, cause you can only do it for a primary residency, okay? Then as that, as that homeowner filing as a primary residency, you're gonna get a $25,000 reduction off of off of the value for a portion of your taxes that you're being paid. So you're gonna take that $100,000 minus 25, so now you're gonna be at $75,000 for your, uh, your taxes that, that you're gonna be paying on. So that's a significant reduction for a first time home buyer. Really for that matter, all the buyers that, are, that have the, these homes, right? That they're getting these exemptions on. But then there's other levels. So if you are 65 and older, uh, you're gonna get an additional uh, $10,000 on off your your exemptions right so another ten thousand dollars off that 25 uh, on top of that and then if you're a disabled veteran you're going to get another twelve thousand um, dollars of of exemptions so there's potentially a significant amount of money that you're taking off of that hundred thousand dollars but if you're just a first-time home buyer with no those other exemptions you're going to be in that twenty five thousand uh, dollar range on that on that exemption so it's absolutely a hundred percent a must to do it. So, okay, thanks for the question. I really appreciate it. Next question comes from Nancy Mueller, and her co she commented up, on your on your pic know, Nancy. that you posted on Jen's birthday. <laughs> what exactly does hashtag party in the front mean? <laughs> party in the front. Well, so Jennifer, for those that don't know, Jennifer's my wife. Jennifer and I have been married for 22 years, and we've worked together for 22 years. Okay, and <laughs> party in the front was just really a way for us to create separation between her and I when it comes to like like the our, let's say our real estate community that that we serve. Right, we're out there and, and realtors, you know, are, are partners and they refer clients to us. Well, it was a way for us to somewhat diffuse who I was as an originator because they were looking at me like, oh my God, this guy's an originator. All he's going to do is try to sell me, you know, something. They wanted, all he wants to do is do loans, do loans, do loans, right? And so when Jennifer, because she manages just our relationship management, you know, obviously that, she manages all the, the relationships and, and helping them grow their business while I handle the business side, the mortgage side. So it was a way for us to say, she's party in the front. So when they see her, they're always wanting to hang out with Jennifer, oh. right? They always want to hang out with Jennifer. She's the party in the front. I'm the business in the back, right? And so okay. I'm the one that actually in their world, in their mind, what they see is I run the mortgage side of it. She runs the relationship, the business management, uh, the marketing side. She's fun, right? Mm -hmm. She's fun. So that, Nancy, I know where you may be going with it, and that's not the case, but that is what party in the front means as it relates to Bob Mortgage. So there you go. Boom. What else we got? That's it for this episode. Awesome. Guys, I certainly appreciate all your questions. I really do appreciate you consuming all the content that we put out. Thank you for going out there on social media. Ask your question. Hashtag Ask Bob Mortgage. Every week we'll come here and work to answer them. Take care. Have an awesome weekend.